Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and as we wrap up our time in Pokemon Sword and Shield before heading into Gen 9 with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, I wanted to take a step back and reflect on some of my favorite memories from this past generation in the last three years. It's been an amazing couple of years, and I am so grateful to be here at Beast Coast Pokemon and also still be making content for everyone. And so on behalf of myself as well as all the other creators here on Beast Coast Pokemon, thank you so much for watching this. We have a lot of big plans in store for the upcoming generation. And yeah, let's just dive right into things. I've picked my top three moments of Pokemon Sun and Shield. First one, I'm going to give it up to the first month of Sun and Shield when the games were first released. There's always something magical about a new Pokemon game, especially in a new generation, and this was the first game to be released on the Nintendo Switch, so there was a lot in anticipation for this release. Something that's always just magical to me about a new generation is going to be the Fury Crafting Team release, something that I just really enjoy. There's always new mons, new abilities, new moves, new changes, especially with old Pokemon, they might make some changes. And then the new mechanic, of course, which was Dynamax, which was something that was really fun to explore in the beginning, especially. I would just have these long Discord calls with my friends. We would be trying to figure out all these new mons, seeing what was viable, what was pretty mediocre or not great, as well as just testing things for the Dallas Regional Championship that was coming up, which was one of the biggest regional championships, especially being the first one for Pokemon Sword and Shield in the VGC era. The first moment for me uh, was winning the Players Cup 2, which actually happened on my birthday. Um, you know, Worlds was canceled and Pokemon kind of, we didn't know what was going to happen with the circuit. We knew that a ton of events were canceled. Pokemon announced the Players' Cup and um, yeah, I was really excited for it. I didn't do super well in the first one. Um, and for the second one, I made it all the way to the final day uh, in a pretty intense um, fashion. Like I, I was in the loser's bracket in the end. So um, yeah, it was pretty like intense and I built a team that I was really proud of and I made it through the first um, day of competition and I have this colossal team which which was really i thought was really strong and I, I had a number of strong opponents from all over the world and in grand finals i had to play against the opponent who sent me to the loser's bracket in the first place um and i lost 0-2 i did not win a game and so i needed to win four games total out of you know at most six and if i lost a single set i was out and so um uh, you know i wasn't so sure if i'd be able to do it but i ended up winning four games in a row um and i felt really proud of my play i think that i made really smart um adjustments and um yeah i was really really happy with that and what was nice is that the broadcast was pre-recorded so even though i won the tournament on my birthday um it wasn't broadcast to everybody for another couple weeks um i think two weeks if i had to if i remember correctly so normally when you're in a tournament you um you don't get to watch the twitch chat you don't get to watch what people are saying um when you're playing in it obviously because you're you're playing in it but for me it was really nice because i knew that i had won and it was really cool to kind of see people experience my plays for the first time while in the audience so and the fact that i won on my birthday as well was just um really really nice so that was that was a great memory the first moment is reaching 100,000 subscribers on youtube that always kind of been a dream of mine and when i started my youtube channel i really had zero expectations you know that was back in 2014 it's been eight years of making content here on youtube and i just wanted to you know create fun videos that would teach people how to play competitive vgc never really thought it would grow to the point where i am today and it felt so surreal because there was such a big boom of new viewers especially towards the beginning of sword and shield in addition i think what sword and shield did really well was make it easier for players to just get into the game it was also a lot easier to make battling content thanks to the introduction of rental codes now sun and moon had introduced qr codes in which you would literally take your 3ds and scan it uh on a website the pokemon global link website to give you a team but that was a little bit harder to execute right with rental codes it felt like everyone was sharing teams constantly and so it was really easy for me to just share a new team every two days and yeah i think the last three years have probably been the most active i've ever been on youtube and so that in itself felt really fun as well i feel really personally fulfilled just making all these really fun battle videos and it's amazing to see people continue and come out and watch even towards the end of sword and shield and so yeah you know i definitely wouldn't be where i am today without everyone's support and so many people coming out and watching whether it be old subscribers all the way back from 2014 or 2015 or brand new viewers and so i'm excited to take that momentum and hopefully grow it into something even bigger in scarlet and violet the second one i'd give it up to is the isle of armor when they first announced the dlc it looked really interesting especially with the new galar birds the new stories as well as some fun additions with an expanding pokedex bringing more additions to sword and shield which would change up the competitive meta there's also a lot of things that I just explored during this time period where I would, for instance, try new approaches to videos, which I thought was very fun, 
I tried out the singles WBE, which was a draft league tournament with a bunch of other YouTubers. And I thought it was really cool because I got to experience singles, which was something that was pretty much not something that I normally do and outside of my comfort zone. But it just ended up being a lot of fun and I ended up doing well in that. And another series that I did was the rank one climb where I got to rank one in the master ball tier of Pokemon Sword Shield, the ranked ladder for doubles. And I did it during one of the hardest time periods, especially during the late part of the month. So that was just something that was really fun and exciting. And I do have some really great moments from the Isle of Armor, especially. The second big memory that I have from Scarlet and Violet is VGC Guide. This is a website that Wolfie, Aaron Trailer, and I actually spent, you know, about a year and a half making. And it was supposed to kind of be a one-stop shop for be beginners kind of getting into VGC. And so we put so much work into it. It was a very, very long process. But in the end, I think we we're really proud of the product that we ended up publishing. We just poured countless hours, you know, sharing our knowledge and experience of the game and trying to break it down a little bit easier for players who are trying to learn competitive Pokemon. If you haven't seen it, by the way, definitely would recommend checking it out. Uh, we definitely want to continue doing more with the website as well uh, but the whole idea is basically having a place where we could just guide people when they are trying to get into the game competitive pokemon is really complex but aaron wolfie and i are all incredibly passionate about getting people into the game we definitely want to share our love and knowledge for everyone because i think we all gain so much from playing vgc in terms of uh, you know friendships and life experiences and of course being able to try to be the very best at something and so yeah it, it just felt surreal to work really hard at something and you know finally be able to share it with the entire world so that's one very memorable moment for me the other memory i would say is um more recent and um basically uh I worked very, very hard on a video about the 2022 Pokemon World Championships, which between you and me, I really wasn't confident the video was going to do super well. I worked really hard on it. I had four other people edit it. We had three editors work on it. It, we, it was in production for about two months between everything. So it was an immense amount of effort. And I was really sure the video was going to do bad because I did super badly at Worlds. Um, it was my first time ever trying to make a, a video like this. And there was no basis for this. Like there was nothing I could go off of. The format was the least appealing to casual viewers since it had um you know so many restricted pokemon and the video was super technical and we got zero footage from world so i was like there's no way this video does well and yet it is the single best performing video on my channel given how long it's been out and so um beyond just the performance you know i, I worked really hard on this I, i'm really proud of how the video turned out and i was prepared for it to do badly but beyond just the performance doing so well seeing what kind words everybody had seeing how the video seems to really seem to really connect with a lot of people and for me that was really special so to kind of like pour my heart and soul into something and see it reach people was um it was a very meaningful experience to me and it makes me really excited to make this is my first attempt at something like this i am sure that i could do better so um it makes me really excited for scarlet and violet and going forward and trying to um do even better and, and improve on what i've done so far the third one is going to be the pokemon world championships and you know i have to put it up there because it was the only gen 8 world championship the only world championship that featured sword and shield something that was just always incredible it was actually held at london and London is always a place that I just wanted to explore for a long time. Finally went to London, got to explore, ended up playing against the best players. Something is just always a feeling, a magical feeling about Worlds. You got a bunch of different Pokemon people, a bunch of different games. You had Unite, you had Pokemon Go, you had TCG. You just had a lot of additions. The last one for Pokken. You just had so many Pokemon lovers. All these people who enjoy the franchise just all in the same convention space. And it was just super incredible to watch. Something that I just really enjoyed playing was the day two, being able to still keep up with the best players in the world that I really enjoyed. I ended up making top four once again, unfortunately falling in the semifinals and then watching one of my friends win the world championship in Eduardo, seeing him win a very well deserved world championship. It just felt like something that was out of a movie. It was really a magical experience for me my third and final point which was being part of the first ever analyst desk at the pokemon world championships you know this was a new segment that we introduced at worlds i love commentating i love competing and this was a new thing that i was able to do alongside scott glaza and it was just so fun like i love dissecting competitive pokemon i love talking about vgc i love talking to players i love talking about the storylines and this was a completely new experience for me and yeah i think it's just really fun to break down high level competitive pokemon right There's 
there's so much that goes into each turn there's so many intricacies and the analyst role in particular was interesting right because you never know exactly what kind of match you're gonna get you don't know if it's gonna end in 10 minutes you know a best of three if it ends in 10 15 minutes or if it goes on for 50 minutes so you don't know how much time let you the segment is really going to take uh but in the end i think uh, i'm really happy with how it went overall and i hope it's something that we continue to do for future pokemon tournaments because i think one of the upsides is that it cut down a lot of the downtime uh, from the viewing experience and those would be my top three experiences in pokemon sword and shield i'll be i'll be grateful for to sword and shield forever i mean i i went from around sixty thousand scrub subscribers to almost seven hundred and fifty thousand over the last you know three years and um yeah in many ways the games like were were extremely impactful to me personally so um i'll always be grateful to sword and shield but i am also very excited to see uh what scarlet and violet bring so um, yeah, thank you to everyone who has supported me thus far, and I will see you in Paldea. Yeah, those are just a couple of my favorite moments from the Sword and Shield era. I think, you know, I try to pick a couple from different areas. I feel very lucky that I've been able to be involved in Pokemon in so many different ways. And of course, a lot of that is thanks to all of you for supporting, you know, me and the rest of the creators here at Beast Coast Pokemon. So yeah, let us know what your favorite memories from this generation were down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet.